So, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are happy to see you here at Java Meetup, and I hope you're doing well. So, tonight we have three speakers that are ready to present, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Lily Tomoshenko, and uh, I want to uh, share with you a few words about our company, Symphony Solutions. It's a cloud and digital transformation company founded 13 years ago. Delivery centers in four countries and over 30 international clients. Uh, Lean Agile Center of Excellence. And also we have this approach, 50-50, gender balance. So our main domain experience is in eye gaming, e-learning and healthcare and many more. So here you can see the map with our presence in Europe and USA, a lot of offices. And next slide, please. <laughs> And uh, the map of our clients is much bigger, right? And here you can see a lot of uh, uh, familiar to you companies, like for example, Vivino for those of you wine lovers. Now we are, we are going to welcome our first speaker, Vitaly Kulikov, at this Java meetup. Thank you. Lydia. Thank you, thank you, Vitaly. So, yeah, I'm Vitaly Kulikov. Uh, I'm working for Symphony for already for for years. I am in IT, I will say 20 plus years. And today I would like to present you a nice tool, Git, and uh, I will name it Everyday Git. So main motivation to, to do this, I just see that a lot of people, especially uh, juniors and middle, even seniors, don't know how to use Git in console. Yeah, uh, other days we use a lot of uh, GUI interfaces, uh, IDE, IDEA, Eclipse, but in some cases you will need to know this and it will it help a lot, even for remote uh, debugging or just pair programming, so on. So just it will be, I will not go deep in the comments or something. Let's do something. Maybe for somebody it will help and he will be interested to use Git in console terminal. So I'm using Git version 2.33. Can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, next slide. Good. No, 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 no. Sorry. So. Yeah, I'm Vitaly Kulikov. Uh, I'm working for Symphony for already for four years. I'm in IT, I will say 20 plus years. And today I would like to present you a nice tool, Git, and uh, I will name it Everyday Git. So main motivation to, to do this, I just see that a lot of people, especially uh, juniors and middle, even seniors, don't know how to use Git in console. Yeah, uh, other days we use a lot of uh, GUI interfaces, uh, IDE, IDEA, Eclipse, but in some cases you will need to know this and it will it help a lot, even for remote uh, debugging or just pair programming, so on. So just, it will be, I will not go deep in the comments or something. Let's do something, maybe for somebody it will help and he will be interested to use Git in console terminal. So I'm using Git version 2.33. You can find by this URL, Git docs. You can see a lot of comments and descriptions. I'm using uh, ZCH, <clears throat> it's uh, extend, extending bash kind of presto, it just plugins for ZCH so you can see some helpful uh, info about uh, Git in your, you will see Git in your folder and this code is just IDE for Java, but we will use it, it's not bad. So. Uh, okay, and uh, I will try to show with comments. I will not, yeah, step on each 
I, we were doing something and I would just describe in some cases what he's do, why, and so on. Uh, as you can see, or you can't see command map, if you're familiar, familiar with Git, you can see merge and branch. Merge, it's, I just remove it on purpose. You will know later why, but I don't recommend to use this command. And branch, I think everyone know. Good, let's, let's try and start something. Okay, here is my console. I also, I have prepared, I have prepared some GitHub uh, repo and just simulated regular project with some commits already and uh, by three branches. And uh, just to describe what we can see, we see commits. To be honest, it's just three branches, three folders, but we have a lot of commits. So I will say you, you should have less, but as they mentioned about match, one match, another match, it's just absolute redundant commits, but, but it's not the problem. Okay, so what should we start? We just should to clone our repo. Okay. So we go here, SSH, pocket. And we can just, and we are in our repository already cloned. So first command, we can see git log. We see history, uh, status should be clean. It's clean, so you just clone, just quickly will show. You can start your locally without GitHub, your repository with init, new repo, and it will be same, but it will be clean. So no history. Okay, it's just about both two comments. Good. Uh, <clears throat> what uh, I will just try uh, simulate once more again what I have done with uh, regular flow, but in more modern way, I will say, or without merge. <laughs> so I will save our current uh, main branch. another branch so it's git push so git push you can uh, do two ways directly to push uh, to another branch or to same so git push origin is our remote head it's it's mean current state of our git and master it will be new branch in our uh, github github repo So it will save it. Will, I will show once more again later. And about just git push. So let's let's create some file. By the way, about uh, plugin to ZCH, it will show some indexes and some squares, uh, dots. It will indicate about your current state. So this one indicate we have a new file. So let's add uh, 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 to our stage. Let's commit. Um, you can you can use git commit without adding in this way. So it will add and commit at the same time. But we already added. Good. So now git log, we have new file, a new new commit, and I can just push. You see, this indicates you have additional commits under under your state. So we will just refresh commits, new file, 
and when we back we can see master branch so it's our backup kind of of our main root so now about log so log in console can be very powerful to use i know but in, in id you also can write such but in, just in case when you're working sorry i forget about this so let's use id i know it's we need i don't push into use to stay only in terminal and java coding so let me zoom out yeah so i for example have oh, five or seven maybe commands so it's alias for git log so this is this one nice just show all commits with with uh, afters uh, okay i will sorry i just hurry up i will do it this way no more with messages once more again uh, so it's here we have so it's alias for this command with nice priority format blah 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 same here just of signature i will switch off it's you know you always can take a look on those alias on some git docs good just short short instruction also it's uh, uh will show afters so you can just see take a look on afters it's di uh, difference by co per commits so each commit you will can, can show quickly and nice one i will not show all you will see tree structure oh okay it's kind of tree structure but in re reality it's just merge request as i said before uh believe me it's a little evil when you when you're using simple project with two people not aggress aggressive coding and pushing maybe it will help but in most cases it's evil because you don't understand the order of commits and where it's coming from as you see i just tried to create merges from different and it's hard to understand i also just remember that merge when you have merge commit it will be resolved when you are check out with commit of this one so it's not resolved here so often uh, merge conflicts happens on check out with your new commits so it means it's not linear history and you don't understand definitely when you're took, uh, looking in github or in your some ide you will see okay it's kind of linear but it's not okay also you can git log for other branch when you are so for example alpha so alpha have only one commit it is deleted okay good um gone in it done remote update so when you start your work you should use remote update so it's mean it will fetch it's it's same as git fetch but it also take a look on uh, new branches changes so it's better to use git remote update it will check all your origins in case you have and your state uh, and another one is nice is prune what does it mean it uh, in case we will create branch branch it's this way or you can use switch minus c it will create new branch we created branch uh, and switch it in same time 
quickly push new okay my fantasy is done page b for me at bracket sorry maybe i okay So yeah, we should add to stage and then uh, push. Good. We have a new branch. Let's push. You can do in this way. Also, so let's create pull request. Pull request. And you see nurture commit squash rebase. For now it doesn't matter. Better to keep the base. Base and match. Good, it's merged and deleted. No, not deleted. Let me delete. Come back. So let's Mine. or git fetch or git pull or git pull git pull yeah you can also git pull and git pull will fetch so it said we, we have new changes so this is down so we are here you see it's just direct without a match and uh, also we have branch here new by uh, in our local new new b but in reality it's in in github it's not exist so in in time you will have a lot of, of branches so you can just clean prune it it means it in case this branch already merged to main and don't exist on uh, GitHub Rebo or GitLab, it will be deleted in your locally. Good status diff. Um, key diff, it will show differences. So it's mean now it we don't have. So let's uh we can do it in this way and show reset so we can reset our state here by two types we can just softly reset so it's mean we will not delete all files they were just on stage and we can hard reset it will be removed, but not now because we have status. So I will just delete by several. So git diff. We will just show this difference that we are not the same. So I will reset back or git pull. So reset can be used also for same as pull to latest changes. So git reset main. And here, as you see on main and its head. Cherry pick up. So as I said, you should not merge, <laughs> merge uh, branches. So you can ju just cherry pick up commits what you need. I will back how to merge all branch. But so let's take a look on, um, for example, alpha. But it's um, okay. We already have. Okay. Let's create new commit. Uh,
uh, I would like to see commits. Oh, here is commit. I will simulate um, our state like here. But Again, CCC. Okay. Yeah, I don't have, yeah. And I need this commit. So I'll look this commit. Well, we have this commit here. Useful sometimes. You see, I'm I'm not synchronized, so it means some commits coming from mine and some are going because I'm uh, gaming with reset and changing history. And uh, git pull, you can pull uh, as a branch to to you. So let's reset once more again history. Try to pull origin. Oops. Yes. So in case you have more commits in your branch, it will come. You have you have seen it take some time. I will show later why it's happened. Git stash, very good stuff when you're working on different branches. So, touch uh, key fantasy, ABC. And you see it changes. And I would like to switch to another branch. So I will just stash. Yeah, I need to add, so to stage it. Now I'm clean. So I can switch to as a branch and work, for example. But when, when I'm back here, I will just take my just back. Yeah, well, it's not even commit, so I can work also, the most powerful, the most powerful command when we are working uh, in console and doing all the stuff what I'm doing, reset and so on, it's git reflow. So git remember your state of your current folder, it doesn't matter on branch, it will remember your state. So each and you can recall recover with state it's not just branches it's just state of your current working directory directory and you can just recover from where so, so it means it was reset moving to origin main i can just before it also was reset i can switch oh sorry Yes, I'm here and one more again. And the floor just showing me, it's not clearing, but now I'm resetting, moving to here. So I can go back. Okay, I don't like it. But better to use hard, you remember, just to delete all your changes, not uh, not coming. So it will uh, it will be same state without uh, differences. Good. Now, now about rebase. So difference between rebase and uh, merge with rebase. Put all your all coming changes or from uh, any branch it's on on top not providing it uh, uh, 
three, but we'll just put on top. So you always uh, have linear uh, history. So it seems I took a lot of time, so I will show this way. Uh, let's switch to our master. Exit our history. So, example, what I need, I need uh, fast commit. You should not do it in, uh, in production. <laughs> on your main branch, but in case you, let's say it's your branch and you have some, some uh, commits with fix or something and you would like to clean up. So you just can rebase. That's without interactive and we'll show. Rebase from some commit you would like. It will do automatically because here no conflicts. Now you see you don't have branches. So git rebase just remove uh, dummy merge commits and keep concrete changes. All right. About, uh, we can repeat this with some interaction. So uh, it's a interactive rebase. So it's mean he will apply to this commit, what we mentioned it by uh, top down. This commit will be applied, by the way, it's, it's cherry pick. So cherry pick, cherry pick, cherry pick, blah, blah, blah. So we can just use here different commands. It's pick, reward is change commit, edit, squash, fix up. So let's fix up, squash. Squash mean we will use this command and fix just will be skipped. I'm using nano, but you can have another editor, maybe Vim. And save. So he's asking, okay, I'm squashing. Would you like to eat commits? Yes. Good. Now, okay. now we have less commits as you see, and here a new commit. Wow. Um, yeah, 15 minutes. Uh, good. So um, I think it's it's good enough. Maybe I will sometime will provide additional expert lesson about some git digging and dipping, and it will help. So. Uh, Good. And back to motivation, just would like to remind. So try, yeah, you can use with GUIs, but try to with, at least try console with different way. If, if for Gradle, in case you use Maven, Git, you will feel some uh, feeling and it will be a nice experience. Don't hesitate. And it's my message. So use rebase, not merge. And yes, it's you, it should be put in your config for git uh, git config pull rebase. It's mean when you are on your branch and you will pull something from a, a main repository or other branch, it will be it will rebase. It's mean in case your branch is not with some commits. Your commit will be always on top and branch uh, what you're merging or pulling will be uh, on, on the bottom. So your commits on top. So you understand where you're applying. Uh, some bonuses, it's about, uh, it's visualization of uh, Git com uh, co uh, commands. It's nice visualization and you understand what it's doing. It's about GUIism. It's not funny, it's just nice to read, not a lot, two, two pages. And yeah, our GitHub. So thank you. Questions? It's just a short question for me. So first of all, thanks for the presentation. It was 
great and uh, great uh, like hands-on examples. So, uh, have you ever had a situation in a project when you have a mix of approaches? Like some team members they use uh, merge, and some team members they use um, rebase. And if you had, how did you solve it? Yeah, it was. Uh, first of all, you should show how rebase work for everyone. And you, yeah, I, I had such experience and we, we have done migrating. So, uh, you should, uh, in case you tackle it or trying to, to do this stuff, you should fully understand and know that everyone understand what is Git rebase and why it's used. So you should explain. Okay, guys, we will have linear history, blah, blah, blah. It's nice to uh, find out when you're, deb uh, okay, when you're looking in file, you will see a nice uh, understanding what is, uh, okay, quickly I show. Um, so it's nice to see history. Okay, maybe it's bad for me because I history is not here so yeah you should be sure and when you uh, definitely everyone uh, on every everyone project we use some github GitLab, Bitbucket. so you should switch off possibility to merge uh, I'm, I'm showing one second so in case it's github you go here okay settings, no, branches, as I remember, no, the options, I think. And just, <laughs> just remove this button. You can leave a squash. Very, very good solution. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can leave squash, it's okay. So sometimes you just, you are, put a lot of commits, fix one, fix two, it's okay. But after that, you would like just to squash as one commit and you are fine. In case your commits are atomic, independent, you should um, rebase your branch on the main locally, but as uh, GitHub and GitLab already have rebase in GitHub, so it will rebase for you and it's good. By the way, it's history of Git. Have you seen Linux Torvald was, have done first 10 commits and how community growing? So one second per day. Okay, okay. next question. I have to remind about the timing. So we are already like uh, out of <laughs> timing. So I would ask next. <laughs> slide but no, not, not next slide next speaker please yeah sure guys you can put uh, in, in case you have question put in chat i will take a look and after that i will try to answer oh yeah or we can you can just write uh, to vitali so by email yeah or write me oh, absolutely you can write me directly but not discard by teams but uh, good i'm uh, i'm stopping my sharing or I even can pass. Okay, I don't know how to, mm -hmm. to pass. I I will take it. So take thank it. you, Vitaly. You're welcome. So now, hello everyone. So my name is uh, Sasha Ivanchenko, and I work for Simple Solutions like more than a, a year, so like almost year and a half, and. Uh, so mostly specializing on the backend part, uh, Java. And uh, today I would like to tell you about the Spring Cloud. So the topic is building server on Spring Cloud pros con constant pitfalls. So just let's go quickly to the, oh, ah, okay. to the presentation agenda. So why Spring Cloud, the first part, uh, Spring Cloud pros constant pitfalls. I am going to show a short demo of the server that I built like a few years ago based on Spring Cloud and how it works, especially how Spring Security works, which is based on 
uh, JWT and uh, how to start with Spring Cloud. And after my presentation, we will have a QA and a session. So that's how we will proceed. So first of all, why Spring Cloud, right? So why should we use some tool? We definitely should know. So the first sentence is that I took directly from the Spring, oh, sorry, from the uh, Spring Cloud documentation. So Spring Cloud provides tools for developers to quickly build some of the common patterns in distributed systems. Well, maybe it sounds uh, complicated, but uh, it's, it's not like that. So really Spring Cloud is all about the tools uh, that you need uh, to solve some common problems in microservices architecture. So uh, those are the tools. So uh, like first and foremost, I would like to uh, point out that we definitely need the distributed uh, version configuration. So, and uh, like maybe even first of all, it's service discovery, right? Because it allows us to have a fully decoupled system when we have a registry server, which discovers all other participants of our cloud uh, system. So that allows us not to hard code like addresses for the service in some places or um, uh, like other workarounds. So like there are many tools here and uh, I think I will not uh, detail, uh, will not uh, put uh, like special attention to every, uh, to each of these bullets because we need to keep up with the pace. So uh, basically this is uh, the common uh, schema of uh, system built around the Spring Cloud. So just a very short introduction then. Uh, here we have a client, but here we have an API gateway. Usually it's not with Zool. And uh, through the gateway, all requests go to the services that do some business logic. Here we have config service that has all the configs for our uh, participants of our, our cloud system. We have our service, which does the authentication. And uh, we have handy features like uh, log analysis and the monitoring dashboard of everything that is going on currently in our system. So Spring Cloud Plus. So let's start with a clear and understandable cloud system workflow. So, you know, when you build a, like when you start build, uh, building a system around uh, Spring Cloud, it's really easy to grasp all the concepts that it introduces. So maybe it's kind of, a, you know, imho, but really when you just read the documentation, you understand what, like what's going on and how to proceed with this tool. So it's very like nice concept to, to grasp it and to understand, uh, which is a big plus. So microservices are not polluted with a boilerplate configuration code. Uh, pretty much is in every spring, uh, like spring uh, allows you to use the declarative way instead of imperative, right? So you usually, it's very often when you use annotations and uh, annotation like does the magic, right? So this is the same actually concept. So here um, you even can even not notice that microservice, that this microservice is managed by Spring Cloud uh, because everything is very so the code amount needed for uh, a participant of micro for microservices uh, to be a participant of a cloud system is, is like very minimal so you need, need to add like a few annotation like enable discovery client right and uh, like for a configure for a configuration services like enable config service and that's pretty much it like few more details but in general the idea is that it's very, uh, the code is still very readable, right? So extremely easy to use in Java Spring ecosystem. So uh, this is actually um, like more about Spring Cloud being a part of Spring framework, like in general, right? So it's very easy to uh, like start writing code because for uh, for us as for our Java developers that we work with Spring. It's a very natural like ways to write systems and the Spring Cloud impairs this very well. Uh, so that's also like a great plus. 
So, uh, and the Spring Cloud libraries are integrated with one another. Uh, this, this is the last bullet from the Spring Cross. So, like for example, the Paint client uh, uses under the hood like the load balancer, right? So, like this, uh, the components of Spring Cloud they usually like integrated into one another, which really simplifies the work under the hood and optimizes it. So. Like they are not like standalone, uh, uh, standalone guys. Let's say so. So um, yeah. So let's go to Spring Cloud like comps. So uh, limited to the Java stack only. Well, it's you know uh, from the previous slide it was a big class that it's extremely easy to use in Java Spring ecosystem, but here is the minus. Because Spring Cloud is, uh, first of all, is the platform to manage microservices, right? So, and microservices idea, big idea, one of the biggest ideas is to use different technologies, different languages, right? And with Spring Cloud, you can go only with Java. So this is, as, again, this has like big pluses and minuses as well, right? So uh, this is how it is. And yeah, you cannot use any different language from Java. So minus. Uh, next bullet, the microservices does more than they should. Well, regarding this, that each microservice like obligated to run some uh, discovery clients, right? Some load balancers under the hood. And uh, basically that's a bit more than they should do, right? So in a sense that when you uh, so like we can I, I, I will uh, on the next slide I will show you the kind of comparison with the Kubernetes because Kubernetes is the platform to manage microservices as well but it's very huge right but if we will compare these two I mean to uh, emphasize the cons of Spring Cloud right uh, then the uh, if you use Kubernetes, you don't need a microservice to run like unnecessary software. So microservice only does its job, right? And that's it. So it's like kind of an easy to add these features like load balancing, like discovery client, right? But still it takes resources and uh, like runtime and the microservice does more than basically it should. So it's obviously minus. So, and still, um, for the third bullet, the microservices uh, with Spring Cloud, they does not cover all things required for MSA system. So, MSA is microservice architecture. So, still, when we use Spring Cloud, it covers a lot, but it does not cover everything. So, we need to still think about the automated pipeline. So, when you do it so, like with some third-party stuff, right? We, we need to care about the like cell healing, about the infrastructure in general. And uh, Spring Cloud does not do this. And for example, Kubernetes does. So let's go to this slide. You can see Spring Cloud with Kubernetes. Of course, it's not really fair to compare these two, right? Because Spring Cloud is uh, kind of kind of a, for a different thing, but they are interconnected because anyhow, both of them are platforms to manage microservices, right? right. So. Spring just do it in a Java way in Spring Cloud. And Kubernetes is language agnostic, it's bigger, but definitely as you can see on this diagram. So Kubernetes handles like everything that is needed. So like including, including the deployment scheduling process isolation event, right? So it's like low level stuff, environment management and Spring Cloud is only responsible for things to related to development, right? So this is a minus because if you are considering implement something, implement a system to manage your microservices in your company, it's important uh, thing to consider. But if you use only Java, well, then Spring Cloud will definitely do the job for you. So as for the pitfalls, um, as I said, that Spring, has, Spring Cloud has very good documentation. It's like fantastic. But still, the part about the JWT uh, configuration is not very clear. So there, there is not a lot uh, like this. 
part of documentation is not very rich and to be honest for me it wasn't very useful so i spent reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of time to configure this JWT by my own so i was reading the different articles in the internet and that was kind of a pitfall that i encountered so it was very hard for me to configure proper security with JWT because JWT is a very like quite good solution nowadays and um, yeah that was a kind of a difficult stuff and also uh take an extra care when configuring a base pass in your gateway service well maybe this is kind of a personal thing but yeah it's very easy to mess up with this so when you configure your uh clients your uh gateway clients gateway services you usually provide the base passes for all your um or all your services under under this um like, which is covered by this gateway and it's very easy to forget about this configuration and then when you like test your system you try your rest path with this without this base pass part and uh, it doesn't work so this is like a personal pitfall that i encountered and i like spent a lot of time and to understand what's going on and only then i remind, I remind myself that oh i have a base pass and, <laughs> and that's that's why it wasn't working so it's demo time as austin powers says so let's go to to the code for a second so basically this is the uh the project that uh, i created this is my pet project so i i use the spring cloud in uh, a couple of commercial projects but i don't have the access to the code anymore and i cannot show it by nda at first so i will show my uh, the, the server of my own so here basically here we have uh uh, I can show you there. Just a second. Uh, I think it's here, right? Yeah, here. So I, I can show you the diagram of this uh, system real quick. So um, the system is just a, a device, like an IoT device, which is from here based on Raspberry Pi. It collects some data from the outside world and then it records it to the system and the mobile app users, they log into the system and read this data from this event service. And as for, so you also we have here push notification service that sends the mobile, uh, the push notification to the mobile apps. So device service that manage uh, the authentication for the devices and uh, you and couple of stuff as well. And here, <clears throat> pairing service is uh, responsible for pairing the device and the uh, user. Uh, and of course, I, I think I didn't show on this diagram the configure the uh, client discovery and the config service. But here are two gateways: so API gateway users and API gateway devices. So on these gateways, we validate the tokens, the JWT tokens validity, and if the signature is correct and uh, everything is fine the user can proceed to the main service and actually to utilize uh, all the functionality there so here basically the code for that and uh, here we have a rest tool to query our service and i wanted to show you how actually easy to use this so of course this about the deployment uh, this uh, server is configured and packed to docker compose so um, it just starts all the services and uh, you know, all the images are built and they are available on um, docker hub so we can start all the services so right now the api will not be will not respond because the server is not up. Let, let, let it fail. And let's run. Let's run our services. So as you can see, only one common Docker Compose up and it will start all microservices at one. And we will be able to query those. Yeah, so as you can see, it cannot 
uh, cannot connect for now. So the idea is to create a user uh, to obtain a token and then to get like according to this diagram to get the events from the event service and uh, i will show you that uh, the token that is obtained for a user from this user out service cannot be used for the api gateway devices and point to retrieve the events so the data source is the same, but the <clears throat> tokens are issued by different authentication services and they cannot be used because uh, they have different keys, uh, encryption keys. So, just a second, let's see. Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of locks here. <laughs> and uh, this console, registers all the logs from all the services. It's a config service, event service, register service. And register service is the uh, so-called Erika. Uh, so Erika is the register service in Spring Cloud. And what it does, it collects, so it kind of a DNS for all the system. So it knows uh, the addresses of all the microservices and you can use so-called faint clients. I will show you quickly. Uh, the example between clients to communicate. Uh, just a second, I think it's event. It should be an event service. Oh. Yeah. So as you see here, we have a faint client, which is the also a really handy feature from Spring Cloud. So here we have the faint client name, and here we have the, the base pass for that. And it's just automatically, uh, by this name, it's automatically uh, connects to the service by this, by this name. And uh, this is the endpoint that it fetches uh the data from so as you can see i don't have any web client here i don't don't connect to rest directly the only thing that i did is i configured this made this configuration like an interface and it goes to our register service search for the notification service and uh queries this endpoint uh from it so no hard-coded stuff like everything nice and easy so let's try to sign up. So let's create the user. I think my test user one and pass one. Yes, the user is created, good. And here let's log in. So we obtained a token, uh, I think I can even show you the locks basically in order to make it more visible. So we have obtained a token here. So right now we can go to get all events endpoint. So we can pass the token here. And we see an empty array uh, because we don't have any events and if we will type wrong token, it will not authorize us. Uh, so this is for for the user and let's test the second gateway. Let's register the user register new device. So device ID number two and the password will be pass okay. So great, we registered a new uh, device. And right now we can obtain a token for it. Okay. Great. And this token also allows us to get all events 
Boom. <laughs> yeah. So, but this in this chain only device service and device gateway service was involved, right? And let's try the same token to access the same data, but from the user gateway main point. So as you can see, we cannot do this because this token is issued from different authentication server and our uh, device service gateway, as you can see, it's validated this and it didn't allow us to perform this action. So basically that's it for the demo. And I don't see my beautiful presentation here. So how to start with Spring Cloud? It's, um, like being honest is the, not the easiest topic to cover because it's huge. And in order to start with it, you need to re read a lot of articles first. But you know, great place to start is documentation just to have a first grasp about that. Uh, really recommend you the article by Alexander Lukian Chikov, and it's fantastic article uh, on the zone. So uh, basically, I even used these materials, this one from his article. So it's very detailed and explained everything like step by step how and why uh, to do. Uh, also, great video by Ryan Baxter and. Uh, he also explains in the video format it's like one hour uh, video about uh, how to configure how to use and how uh, spring cloud works and also like really amazing uh, articles by rajiv singh uh, it's especially focused on how to configure the GDT, jwt based security in spring cloud so really recommend these resources and by the way i used uh, in my JWT, I even used the SHA-512 algorithm. So, which is uh, very reliable because this, the default implementation is uh, 256, which is, which has been corrupt, corrupted already. So, uh, this one is uh, much more reliable and uh, uh, this series of article describes how to configure the default one, but not much changes. Uh, I, I did not make changes to uh, uh, change the algorithm. Actually, I think it was pretty recent changes. Um, no, it still was a long time ago. Okay, so please, Q and session. Any questions you have, please. Um, Ready to answer. Right? Anyone? Yeah, I have one quick. So I haven't seen you are using uh, Spring Cloud Getaway and Spring Cloud Config. So where are you using your configs? How are you using and um, mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't use it at all. I mean, like explicitly so the config service is managed config service and the register service is uh, components that are managed by spring cloud itself so uh, let me show you the register service here so the config service as i told you it contains all the configurations for all microservices that we have and it uh, it is run like in the batch of microservices and then register service when it gets up it goes to config service and then when other microservices can connect to both of these guys they can only start up only after that uh, so, i see i see i see my best uh, do you use yeah. uh, uh, real time uh, reload uh, configuration only yeah, on this project cloud. doesn't use real time yeah no okay so good really good question good catch yeah I, uh, this should be refactored because uh, you need to restart application uh, right now when you change configs so yeah this is a good drawback and and uh, what type 
of uh, IP gateway are you using? Kubernetes? It's or Netflix Zoom. Net Net Netflix Zoom. Ah, Netflix Zoom. So, okay. Yeah. So this is the implementation. And by the way, it's very interesting config that I should show you. So these are uh, the config for our, for example, device gateway. So uh, these are the services that are available through this gateway. So this is the service name, right? The URL. So this URL is picked up from the registry service. So registry service contains all the uh, information about the services. This is the service name. And uh, uh, like gateway fetches the service name, uh, service address by fetch, uh, service name. And after that, it manages all, like has this base pass for all the routes under this device service. Same as for event service. So uh, it will be better visible here. For example, as you can see, here, events, event, volume change, event, like this is the endpoint address. And this events part is here, here. So that's how we do the mapping uh, for all the resources under this service. So this is the base pass for events service, events. And uh, that's actually how we uh, use the power of the gateway so you can um, easily shape your url form without changing the code like on on the actual service because the event service is here right let me quickly show you this is the controller uh, here and this is the endpoint that i show you this is it right event volume change event this is it and the uh and this is like uh, this is the base passes for for this endpoint yeah sorry guys i, I really took too much time so no, it's very interesting and complex cloud. topic yeah i really love spring cloud and uh, i worked a lot of time to make this service work so <laughs> any questions uh if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me. I have some experience in this stuff and I will definitely help you to start or with any problems that you can have. That's it. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> okay. Uh, welcome. Do you hear me? See me? Yep. Can you share? Yes. Uh, you see my screen? Yes. Excellent. So thank you, Sasha, for your presentation. What you are going to see in my presentation is quite similar. So for my playground project, I use very similar <laughs> project as yours. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. So in uh, my session, let me first introduce myself. My name is Zoran Bogatinsky. I'm a senior Java developer at Symfony Solutions for five and more years. And I would really like to show you something very simple but powerful techniques how to log your uh, how to log your uh, SQL queries when you're using Hibernate, and uh, also how to dynamically create uh, uh, queries like uh, with native uh, uh, like native SQLs, but also with hybrid uh, with Hibernate and uh, JPA as well. So. First tool I would like to, to present is uh, called P6Py. It's a very nice uh, third-party library that solves the problem of uh, not uh, showing the, uh, the exact SQL that Hibernate is generating. It will show you the, the, the SQL, but as prepared statement with question marks where the parameters are, and that you have to fill for yourself if you want to execute in a query, query editor, for example. So uh, that will uh, so this uh, P6Py third-party tool is kind of a middleman as a wrapper to to the JDBC driver, which will intercept all the calls that are sent to the driver and uh, 
just lock them and proceed with the execution as 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 uh, they would normally do it's very easy to configure and very very powerful if you want to analyze why something is wrong with your query or or performance or some records are missing the result is not correct or something like that and the other tool that you're going to show i'm going to show uh later is uh oh, i have a typo there uh, query dsl it's a uh, the tool that solves the problem of the unnecessary complexity of criteria api that we already is already present in jpa for example if you have some kind of a, let's say online shop and you want to search for products on different criteria like a type of uh, uh, part of the name or uh, a price range or type of product or all kind of uh, combinations between all the parameters you can uh, uh, create a dynamic query with native uh, uh, SQL, of course, or prepared statement. But it's uh, if you want to do it with, uh, with Hypernet, you are stuck with the Criteria API. So Query DSL is a nice tool that also third party tool that will actually solve this problem. So let's uh, I'm excited to show you how this all works. So let's immediately dive into the project that I already prepared as a playground project. So let's enter full screen here. So if you just type in p6py, first link on internet is the actual uh, documentation you can find here. Uh, installation, configuration, and so uh, you definitely should check this out. The same for query DSL. But first of all, let, let me first introduce you to the Playground project that I already prepared. It's very similar to what you have seen in a previous session uh, that Sasha presented. It's a uh, Spring Cloud, we have Config Server, we have Gateway Server, we have Registry Server, Eureka. Everything is pretty much the same. And in the Config Server here, I have configuration for all the microservices that are uh, created in, in this sample project. In resources, we have uh, a lot of services and st stuff like that. So, uh, Hibernate is giving us this show SQL command uh, that will actually show all SQLs that, that Hibernate is generating. And sometimes, I, it's my personal opinion, sometimes Hibernate is doing things on its own, not as we want it to be, and we have to uh, be careful with that. So, uh, show SQL is a part of JPA and uh, Spring uh, JPA and show SQL. If we enable this, I like this now, I usually disable, but for this presentation, I'm going to enable. We can see how, how Hibernate gives us what is uh, generated. You, I'm pretty much sure that everybody who, who works with Hibernate already know about this parameter and we will compare uh, compare it uh, with the rest. I already have started all the necessary uh, services uh, that are needed for this presentation. And as well, I have uh, prepared some, uh, already I have prepared some token here. This is a configuration file for, uh, for uh, already logged in and uh, in order to execute some statements. I'm going to use this uh, HTTP support that uh, JetBrains IntelliJ uh, has. You, you are free to use uh, Postman or Insomnia or whatever tool you, you like. I just, it just happens for me that I like this, uh, everything in one file and one ID, ID. So in this case, I'm going to search, let's say for products and on different parameters, I'm sending uh, an example object here with part of the product name, uh, some fields, uh, which manufacturer already typed the ID of the manufacturer and uh, some uh, paging and ordering. I, I don't have ordering in this case, but uh, first uh, 50 rows, let's say, uh, from the result. So if I execute this one, it's going to get get me the, the first page of, of all the uh, results that uh, uh, we, 
we are going to focus on a product uh, only on a product uh, microservice so let's open that, that uh, here and let's clean up the, the lock and see how what will happen so i'm going to execute it with the config environment that which means uh, host and token are going to be replaced with with, uh, uh, with the uh, values from the config uh, from the environment and i have the result here in uh, directly in intellij so we have let's say five elements you can browse them there are a lot of fields that's not important this is the manufacturer of of this first one we have price object inside the first one and so on then it's a second object third object and so on so let's see what uh, what was locked in the product application so hibernate that show sql that i just show you is giving us this line so i'm just going to copy this line and analyze in a query editor If I just open it's a Postgres, as you can see, driver, oops, I just need to copy this, paste, yeah, and if I want to execute, all these question marks needs to be filled in order this to work, so it's quite, uh, I, I guess nobody is going to do that if there are so, so so many question marks if i want to analyze if this uh, how can i say query is uh, performing well if i want to type explain again we need to fill all these uh, parameters by ourselves I'm just going to briefly uh, jump into another application just imagine for example if you have another sql like this and uh, question marks like endless question marks like something like product ID in, and then uh, hundreds of them. We are not going to do any of that, I guess. So what is going on now? How the P6Py is going to, to solve us? Let's we first show you the, the, the solution and then how, how it's done. So just below this line, I have what P6Py, just as a comparison. This is the line that P6Py is actually logged uh this is uh, the log from p6py so if i just copy this just paste it here format it as well yeah and i can immediately execute and i get the, the same five result that i already saw in the res response the json response so i already have everything filled out from the parameters and looks nice so how it is done? <clears throat> Let's open the configuration. So it should be here. Yeah, we, we already saw this. The JDBC driver is like this. Uh, standard Postgres driver and the URL is JDBC Postgres and then the, the address of the database. What I have done here is uh, another another uh, configuration here we just override these two fields i'm just replacing the driver class name with p6 driver p, uh, p6 pi driver and then all the modification that is needed is just put this string here as as really as a middleman in inside and everything will work uh, as you saw it uh, just to show you how it is run, I'm going to edit configuration and open uh, microservices. And this product uh, application is actually configured to work with Spring Pro uh, Profiles Active Server P6 prior done. And this is exactly this YAML file that is going to be used on that, that was used on startup. So this file is actually configured to be used and override the existing. Uh, uh, values for driver and for URL. So driver is not Postgres, it's this one. And we just put this here and that's all. There is also another another file that you can find also in the documentation. 
uh, which is uh, spy dot uh, okay, I can find, yeah it's called spy dot properties and in spy dot properties you have extensive uh, document I mean commented documentation what you can do here how to do it for example I overrided the, the, the format of the log file to use only current time and execution time and the actual SQL that they want to, to see. Also, you can use file appender. So all the, the, the locked SQLs are going to uh, be inside uh, yeah, file appender. I have disabled it now, but maybe you want exactly like that. So all the SQLs will not be mixed up with the console log, but in a separate file, and you can then use them and analyze in, in any way possible. What I usually do is, as I show you like, like this, uh, I can, for example, oh, sorry, I can copy every single line from a log file and uh, extract the SQLs and then analyze them in, in any way possible. For example, uh, uh, analyze if there is some wrong join or something is way uh, too long, uh, uh, execution is too long or, or uh, something is just not right. So you have to analyze your, your queries if the right indexes are used, like explain and then check it out if, uh, if everything is correct. Okay, like, yeah. So here you can analyze costs and things like that which is very difficult to do if you're not uh, if you're not going to uh, see the SQLs that are actually uh, generated uh, by by Hibernate. <clears throat> so very useful tool, very good tool, very easy to configure even on your current projects. Not nothing to refactor, nothing to to, to uh, make anything complicated. Give it a try, or if you're using something similar, I would like to to know if there is some better tool than this as well. So I'm going to quickly jump to the other tool now, which is called, uh, called Query DSL. And Query DSL also is a very interesting uh, third party library that you can uh, configure in your POM file as well. And it looks like this. Just immediately, if you just look at the examples, it's very readable, very straightforward, how we can query with Hibernate using chaining, method chaining. For example, this first article here, let's just briefly open it from Biolink. It explains that JPA 2.0 standard bro, uh, has an improvement, uh, Criteria API, here, here is how Criteria API is. Uh, you know, should look, looks like, and how query DSL actually comes into place uh, when you want to, to create something dynamic. So we already saw how this, uh, how can you say, these uh, conditions here in the where part are automatically generated. So what we would like to do is, uh, let's say in Java, we would like to do something like if uh, product example, product type is not null, then do something like that. Then add this line, otherwise do not add anything. So very easy to do it with native, native uh, SQL, native queries, but how to do it with, with query DSL. Uh, let's jump a little bit uh, here on, uh, on this one. Let's, for example, delete these fields and just execute again and see what will we get again. Let's clear the, the locks and execute this once more. Oops, comma, okay. Again. And we click here and we get the result. Now we have 30 results. Very good. So let's see the product application. And here is the, the latest query that I executed. Just going to copy that. Uh, we go to the query 
editor here and I'm just below that I'm going to paste it and we can see now we don't have this uh, fields that I just removed let's debug that and see how how uh, how I'm going how I'm doing this with query DSL and actually my own implementation of of it so just an idea so uh, what 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 you can do with it and maybe you can come up with a better idea of course ah one more thing before going on here i'm using post to actually get something so i know this is wrong this is kind of deliberately breaking some rules here because i would like to send a json object as a, as a payload in order to to do uh, to do what i want i'm doing this only for paging not only for products for other entities as well so i can briefly show you how uh, why is this for example here this is the page uh, endpoint that you already i'm invoking so find though i already have something like generic page request by example and something like this i have some generic example and some lazy load event which will contain paging information first uh, row rows and so on so this is my implementation you don't have to use post for getting things it's just uh, uh, just my, my my way to do it so uh, let's go to this part <clears throat> this is how how query dsl is configured here query dsl has this uh, for example i have product and with annotation processor these uh, clusters with few prefix are generated let me show you are auto generated by query dsl and they are in, if, if you can see in the in the target so annotation processor similar as mapstract uh, works they are generated uh, here compiled and part of the project is anything else so don't you can look at them if you if you're interested but that's how how this magic works and uh, let's make a breakpoint here go back to this one return return what we have here and execute again and we stopped so what will happen for example here i'm going to stop again here first of all let me show you this is uh, some class that i have created and maybe it's an idea for your own implementation what i have here is uh, class with utility static methods uh, that has something like this not empty and not empty and it just allows me to use method chaining so let's go inside this and here let's jump here so value is l it's not null it's going to jump here and create and and uh, expression function is uh, of course a product type and the value is l it's just going to add product type equals l in this case if we have something that is not present like here for example let's enter here and now again ah, okay this is also a value uh okay here we don't have ml code for example ml code is null that's things that got this inside it's just going to return this and like nothing happens so we can do this trendy method chaining and the code looks quite uh, readable even for beginner developers they immediately understand this and it's a, as a contrast to let's say criteria api that hibernate uh, gives us uh, at the end we have something like uh, let's exit this method and see what this boolean expression is it's just some you see whatever we have selected it's dynamically generated and with p6 by we can actually see see the end result uh that is all what i have prepared 
just to give you an, a, a teaser, an idea that there are very useful tools like that that are, can solve quite uh, easily some common problems like logging or dynamic queries. And I really hope you will find them interesting since from the time when I stumbled upon them, my first thought was this is exactly what I needed in, in, in my project. And I really use them along uh, quite frequently uh, among my projects and uh, I'm pretty satisfied. So uh, more or less, that's it. I would like to hear some comments now and opinions. And, uh, yeah. Zoran, just one one question for me. First of all, thanks for the great intro, really really cool features. But I saw that you showed that one file. Um, I, I don't remember exactly which one, but it felt for me like you add some business logic to the uh, DO layer. So you were adding to the query some. Um, some where clause you were writing a where clause to the query to the query logic where clause uh okay you, you mean here yeah you, you you added you added some uh not here the previous one i think it was even a previous tool previous tool and, uh, yeah probably i i unfortunately i lost the track of the file but you were adding some uh Cloud some uh, logic in the query execution process. So you show if you will add where it will select only this type of objects and not those ones. So my only thing was that adding uh, business logic to uh, data layer it's uh, not a good practice. So it can be helpful, it can be useful, but you should not. Uh, like invest in it heavily because for example okay. i've worked with so i i can make oh, a parallel with the sure sure, no? sure. Uh, yeah I, I can make a parallel with uh storage procedures in database you know so this is the if detail, you have a lot of detail file is this and here you don't have logic i didn't show you this file no no I, I, unfortunately i cannot remember which one that, okay. that's my bad but somewhere somewhere you added where a cloud and I lost my track, unfortunately. So this is okay, maybe this that I showed. I showed few products, which is generated file. So I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, my bad. I think my, my question lost the validity because I, I don't remember. Okay. The <laughs> so I'm sorry. Let's call it war yeah. star. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know <laughs> what we look for. Okay, Laurent, uh, what what type of so um sorry what type of targets exist from the box for p65 p65 what type of targets yeah uh what do you mean by targets I... yeah where, where we can log um aha, aha, our... aha, 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 aha. spy properties yeah you can log uh, as i said you know you have several appenders you see ah we use look for j for the layout okay. this one file appender you can mix you can uh, uh, also use multiple file and and and, uh, and standard output very powerful just uh, browse the documentation and i don't know i i've seen a lot of developers are just ignoring the, the sqls no it works and yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, I think I need it, and uh, but I would like to put uh, execution to Elicastic, so to put Elasticsearch directly. But yeah. as I see, we are using work for J2 as mm -hmm. a pandas, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can. Uh, so it's easy to configure. Okay, good, good, good stuff. Just a wrapper around your. It's not only for Hibernate. It's for for native query as well. So for prepared statements, also you cannot see prepared statements, you know, the uh, with the values expanded. So this tool will as, as well uh, help you with that. Good, good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Are you using Linux, right? XFS. 
it's Linux. And just this uh, icon here is to confuse everybody. You will not trick me. Yeah. But it's Linux, believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know this. <laughs> what, what's the distribution? Uh, Manjaro. Manjaro. Uh, so you are cool, man. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we have the uh, third topic about <laughs> Linux for Java developers or at all in IT. Guys, use <laughs> Linux <laughs> or, or Mac OS. It's not Linux, it's FreeBSD, but it's Unix, so it's same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Arch Linux is very powerful for development and Manjaro is good. I know. Yeah. Let's, let's say so, don't, don't use Windows, right? Yes. <laughs> this is the best configuration, if you ask me. You see, you see, I'm using virtual machine here. So this is my, my real machine. It's also Linux, it's also Manjaro and everything. But I found out that using a desktop and vir virtual, you know, with VMware, it's a fast machine for development. It's the best approach. Yeah, it's customizable, Anything it's lightweight. For development and without emails and not uh, messaging uh, applications. Yeah, this is just yeah different topic. So I like it only one, I think only one, uh, okay, two, uh, two stuff from Microsoft. It's Visual Studio Code, but still Visual Studio Code is open source, but okay, Microsoft is going to support with ID and yes. azure azure is also awesome so yes 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 I, okay I, stop I, yeah we can stop blaming windows and the microsoft okay <laughs> guys do we have questions to zoran please hi i have one question thank you zoran and sasha i uh, joined a little bit late uh, I noticed that Sasha was using Insomnia for his requests and you mentioned something I can see it built in within the IntelliJ. Yes. I know that it is not connected within the, for these two uh, awesome two uh, libraries that you have shown, but can you tell me how did you, uh, what is this magic <laughs> yeah, this behind? Quite cool, yes. Uh, this is HTTP, just you have to have a file with extension HTTP. It's, uh, you know, IntelliJ uh, new feature from a couple of months, I don't know uh, how long. And you have, for example, a JSON file with configuration, you put whatever you want here, and then you use it uh, just like this. So let me let me show you briefly. So it's not a plugin, right? No, no, no. It uh, comes with, uh, with uh, the ultimate version of IntelliJ. Let me, let me show you, for example, this is the project that I'm working for Hewitt Packard. For example, if I just copy, copy Carl, okay? Copy Carl, copy Carl works like, uh, like this. Oh, sorry, like this, and it will return results, okay? But what will happen if I just open tests here? I have tests, I will delete everything. This is an empty file now. And I just paste it here. And you see, it's formatted. If, if there is, this is a get. If I have a post, it will be a JSON here. And I cool. can literally just press this. Uh, it's very good for testing. So I can just press, I, have, I don't use config here, so I can go directly here and uh, here I can see, ah, the token is invalid now, but it, it, uh, it, because it's... I get the point. Th thanks, it's point cool is... not to go and open too many windows, but be within yeah. focus within use, the IntelliJ. Uh, use, uh, you know, your favorite editor to edit, to search, to do whatever you want. Very, very powerful. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, so it's also... a kind of a cool asteroid, right? <laughs> Uh, REST, it's yeah, it's based on REST client. So in case you don't have IntelliJ Ultimate, you can go Symfony to, to buy. But in case you don't, don't want to migrate, try, try to find out retrofit REST client or yeah, retrofit because uh, Visual Studio Code has very similar to this. Yes, yes. HTTP with a plugin and uh, you try that as well. So it's free. So Visual yeah. To, to give some redemption to Microsoft, they, they actually do a, they <laughs> <laughs> a job there as well. Good. Okay, anything else? 
I have a question. Uh, uh, what Maven plugin should be used in order to generate those Q entities? I mean, the uh -huh. one that I use it for queries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, query DSL. And, uh, okay, it's more like that. Query, query DSL in the POM. So you just configure query DSL like this. Uh, it's all, everything is in the documentation and it's, it works without any changes. So you just put, uh, uh, put in the POM file, everything that is, you know, described in the documentation, here, uh, and the, the document, this is the plugin. It will process and generate uh, generate everything in uh, target generate sources Java. That files are Java files going to be compiled to class files, and uh, works like uh, how can you say magically works. Annotation processor is a powerful technique. You can even uh, you create your own annotation processor, which uh, is uh, maybe topic for another session, where you can. Uh, do how can I say uh, a lot of uh, things that are duplicated or very similar, but you don't want to use generic because generic does not uh, the right approach. You can use a notation processor and actually uh, relieve your your source code from uh, unnecessary uh, how can I say boring code for CRUD operations. Everywhere you have get by ID, get by page, get by this and that. It, everything is the same, but you want to overwrite only a few things and you don't want to use generics. Annotation processing is a powerful technique if you are not familiar with that. Just an idea. So, annotation processor does these Q classes, which are used by, by Query DSL. And uh, okay. that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great question. Lauren, you should migrate to Gradle. <laughs> so, guys, I assume we can finish. Or maybe someone else has some questions. Okay. If you will remind, remember some question, you can just uh, write to LinkedIn, right? As the uh, speakers left the uh, links. Yeah. Uh, my uh, email. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time, your participation on this uh, Java meetup. Looking forward to, to meet you and talk to you on Java topics. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Not only. We can Thank talk. Thank you all, guys. It's been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, well, okay. Lila, just one question. Uh, I have a link um, at the end of my presentation, and as well as the guys. Will they be accessible? for the people here, I mean. On request. On request, okay. Yeah, we don't so, have special place for the, to place a presentation, but uh, on request, some people were asking to share the video recording and as well the presentations. If you are allowing mm -hmm. low this, we can on request send to the email. So you have a few minutes uh, to uh, write your emails. Participate. Yeah, because there are a lot of useful links there and yeah sure and also uh, at our youtube channel you can find this record as well um, wow. in two days <laughs> we will <laughs> post it publish it so yes so follow our youtube channel there will be a lot of useful meetups and videos not only java related but okay so i don't see uh it's special to share the name of the video about introduction to Spring Cloud. I think uh, you have one more question from Carol. Is it possible to share the name of the video about introdu introduction to Spring Cloud? Of course, guys. I will do the phone in just a second. Uh, it's not, I will not share the name, but I will share the, the link. So, here we go. 
And if you want the name, I will share the name as well. <laughs> yeah, just a second. You're welcome. And also you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, just say your question. Yeah. As this is a meeting. Okay, guys, so it's 8.47, like uh, leave time. So I assume we can finish. And thank yeah. you again. Have a good evening. Thank you, guys. Take care, guys. Bye. 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 -bye.